Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you some of the apps that I use for my Synology DSM. So let's get started. So I do want to thank Synology for sending me over the 1019 Plus and I've been playing around with it for the past couple of months. So if you want to see that initial review, I will have a link right over here. But today we are actually going to be taking a look at the DSM or the Disk Station Manager. Now keep in mind that not only can this double as a NAS, this can not only can this be a not only is this a NAS, it can actually double as a server. So I want to thank Synology for sending me over the Synology 1019 Plus. And if you want to see the initial review on this guy, I'll leave a link right over here on the top left. Now, keep in mind that not only is this a NAS, you can actually double this up as a server. So the DSM, which is also the Disk Station Manager, will allow you to install other applications into it to allow you to serve uh, mail or virtual machines and stuff like that. So I'm going to be showing you guys a list of applications I have installed in my DSM. So when you first log in, you will actually get presented with this desktop where it actually shows you all the storage information, health, resource monitor. You go into here and configure the storage, uh, go to your control panel, add users, and a bunch of other stuff that you want to do. It's, it's all here. Now, one of the biggest things about this is that the package center. Now, the package center has their own Synology versions. And you also have third party versions. So you could basically install what Synology offers or other stuff that other people made, like Dockers and you know, stuff over here. So I'm gonna show you guys what I have installed. Mainly the newest feature that they just recently added from Synology is the surveillance station. And this is a big one because I've actually been playing around with this and I've added my IP cameras to it. Now, this is a really cool application that they recently added, is because if you have multiple IP cameras or multiple brands, multiple versions. That means you have to download and install multiple apps on your phone just to view whatever camera angle you have or whatever brand it is. This isolates everything into one central location. Best of all, it stores everything to your NAS. So you don't have to worry about plugging in an SD card to your IP cameras, praying that it won't corrupt, you know, or not have enough storage. Basically, this solves all that. And this puts it into like one pretty live view station. Now, I only have one camera that I hooked up to this guy but I do have multiple cameras around the house. I'm just showing you guys as an example. I'm actually able to control this camera if I wanted to move the angles a bit. And I'm also able to record and do whatever I need to do. Now this one also has like audio input and output so I can actually talk to this guy and it'll reply back. And I do want to thank Synology for sending the Armcrest monitors over because I had a hard time trying to get IP cameras due to the whole thing that's been going around in the world. But Keep in mind, this is on low quality. This is at 640 by 480. You could go up to 1080 with this guy. Uh, I am on Wi-Fi with this just for this video, so I lowered the quality, but you can do 1080 as well. Now, if I close out of this, setting up the guy is very easy. If you head over to IP cameras, you could actually set everything up right here. Add new cameras, remove, or even change the settings. And you could see, you could actually allocate how much storage you want each one to have. So this guy, this one camera has 7.8 gigs used right now, but I have it set to, I think, 10 gigs. And if you go into edit, you could actually change whatever you want. And if you know the brand or the version of uh, the model you have, it will automatically connect, provided that you give it the IP address. And in here, you could just change whatever you want. Like you see, I have it changed over to 640 by 480. And you could change the audio format, video format, etc, etc. Record settings, you could also change this over to whatever you want. Schedules, stream, advance, how many times you want it to uh, rotate the videos every 60 minutes, uh, how many gigs you want to give it. Like all this set, you could set it through here. And then if you do have multiple cameras, like I said earlier, it will have like one central station where all the monitors would be viewed over here and you could just click to you know enlarge each one. But for now, I only have one just to show you guys and it does work very good. Now, moving on, uh, the next thing I have is Virtual Machine Manager. Now, I don't really use this. Um, that's because I have a full server set up for VM, but if you are gonna run, but if you have the DSM and this is your only machine and you need to run virtual machines like Windows 10 or smaller Linux installations, you can. You're not limited to not being able to. It's not just the NAS. You could run this as a full VM server if you needed to. I mean. Granted, it's only got eight gigs of RAM in this guy, so you only have a limited resource that you could run your VMs, but 
the availability is there and if you upgrade the ram you could probably run a little bit more and that's for stuff that you know whatever you want need to run like you can run a small little linux os and run a web server or stuff like that on here next up is replication services now there are two ways to replicate this i use this replication service where it will actually back up to another machine so i have my data one to one to another machine but you could use replication services or snapshot so i don't have it installed right now but you could install their snapshot replication and this will actually create like what it says a snapshot of your hard drives and your data and if you need to restore something you could just restore the snapshot and it'll be at the previous state like it's like a restore point but it's a snapshot but i i recommend if you have the hard drive space do a full replication to another system that's just my recommendation but yeah, Snapshot works just as well if you say caught a virus and modified some files and you need to restore it. Now, next up we have Docker. Docker is basically similar to your virtual machine manager where it allows you to run uh, enclosed, everything contained into a little server and it could run say web servers or stuff like that. And I have a, a bunch of Docker stuff installed instead of having to run a full virtual machine with the overhead of a virtual machine. Yeah, I would run Docker. Next up, we have Plex Media Server, and I don't know if I really need to explain this, but the Plex Media Server allows you to run your media onto your network and everything else. Now, you do need a premium account to run the transcoding, but the transcoding is awesome on this guy. On this NAS, I was actually able to get up to eight or nine streams, 1080, simultaneously using their transcoder. So having a Plex Media Server on this little NAS guy, wonderful. Universal Search is something that they have pre-built in, uh, along with OAuth, if you need to do uh, two-factor authentications, if you have multiple logins and stuff like that. So yeah, this one, uh, OAuth service, and then your file station, which is also pre-installed. And the file station allows you to, you know, read files and stuff like that locally through this web browser. You can just see everything here. And if I'm going to open up Docker, I'm going to also show you that I have, you see it's a little contained. It's using about 800 or almost a gig of RAM. And I have two things installed right now. You could have multiple stuff but mainly what i have is for my steam caching or my game caching basically anytime that i download a steam game it will be stored onto my synology nas and anytime that i'm going to reinstall it onto another machine instead of pulling from steam it'll pull from my no local network so i'm going to get the fastest speed possible downloading that game as well it's a really quick way to back up the game if you need to download it multiple times like I do. So anytime that I do like a video review, if I'm trying to if I'm trying to do a benchmark with GTA 5 or something like that, GTA 5 is 90 gigs. If I have it stored here and locally transferred into my machine that I'm testing on, it's much faster. So I'd rather this way. That's why I have this land cache set up. Again, you could run this all on a VM, but you have that overhead of running the actual VM. So Docker's is probably the best way to run these things on. Anyway. Uh, that's it for me. I mean, those are the main things that I generally use. Docker, replication services, um, Plex Media Server, VM, as well as the surveillance station. Those are the things that I generally use for my home installation. If you guys have any recommendations for software that you guys use, let me know down in the descriptions below and I would love to review it and see what it's all about. So yeah, definitely do that. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts